In the last video, we talked about a phenomenon referred to as black body radiation. And the main idea is, let's say I have some solid object, uh, so this has to be a solid, then if I In the last video, we talked about a phenomenon known as black body radiation. And the main idea behind it was if I have some solid object, so this has to be a solid, where it will absorb uh, close to all of the light that is that hits this object, so it doesn't reflect any, so the object will appear black, then as the temperature of this object increases, eventually this object will start to glow if you get it uh, just that normal room temperatures, it'll be glowing in the infrared, so we can't really see it's glowing at that point. But as the temperature increases, it will start to glow uh, first red, and then as the temperature goes up, it'll the uh, frequency of the light will, will increase, and it'll start to glow yellow and then white, and it'll get brighter and brighter as we go. And this, uh, this spectrum of light that it gives off, if, if we look at a graph of the, of the wavelength, versus the, the intensity of the light, then at low temperatures, it, it might look something like this and be at long, high wavelengths and, and not very strong. But as the temperature increases, the, uh, the graph both gets larger and moves to higher and higher frequencies. So we, we see that as this object heats up, it'll give off a characteristic spectrum which only depends on the temperature. And this is going to be a continuous spectrum. There's no uh, sharp, uh, sharp features in this. And we compared these graphs to the spectrum that we see from the sun. And we saw that the sun is not a perfect black body, but it is fairly close and, and close enough to uh, for us to be able to match up one of these graphs and get a good idea of what the temperature of the sun is. However, we noticed that there were some other features in the spectrum of the sun. We noticed that there were a number of, of sharp lines that, that seemed to be uh, apparent in the spectrum of the sun that aren't apparent for normal black bodies. And we want to see where those features come from and what can we learn from those parts of the spectrum. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to take a quick look, a quick recap of what the structure of an atom is. So if I have an atom, then at the center of that atom, there's a very small nucleus, a very small and extremely dense nucleus. And all of the protons, which are positively charged, and the neutrons, which have no charge, are all located in that central nucleus. And around that nucleus, we have our electrons. So around here, we can have a number of different states that the electron can be in. So, so these are, you can kind of think of them as different states. And we can have, maybe there's an electron in this state and an electron in this state. But one thing that's important to know is that these electrons, these electrons, can only be in specific states. So can only be in specific, specific states. So if these are if these are my states, an electron can't be halfway in between one of these states. And these states are actually kind of uh, quantum mechanical orbitals that uh, are around the atom and and I'm not going to get into too much detail uh, about what these states actually are, other than to say that with each of these states, there's a different energy associated with it. So we can have, uh, we can have the energy of state 1, uh, the energy of state 2, the energy of state 3, and there would be more and more states that, that could go up from here. And the last thing is that as you go closer as the electron goes closer to the nucleus of the atom these energies are going to be lower energies and electrons always like to be in the lowest energy state so they're always going to try to get down to here but maybe the object is hot so a hotter object will have more energy so maybe these electrons will move up to higher energy states so we might ask well what happens 
if I have an electron that starts out here in a high energy state, and maybe this electron will fall back down into a lower energy state. So maybe the electron falls back down there. I started out with a lot of energy, and then the electron doesn't have as much energy left. Well, where did that energy go? And what actually happens is that that energy, if this happens spontaneously, that energy is going to be given off as a photon. So we have a photon that's going to be emitted away. And if I started out with energy 3, so I started out with energy 3, and then at the end this was only at energy 1, so I subtract energy 1, then this is going to be the energy of the, uh, I'm going to call this energy gamma, because gamma is kind of the signal for, for a photon. This is going to be the specific energy of the photon that's given off. And that means, if it's a specific energy, that means that the wavelength of that light given off is going to be at a very specific wavelength. So we're going to, when this process occurs, we're going to get a very specific color light that's emitted. So, so maybe that corresponds with this part of the spectrum, this red part of the spectrum. Now, this isn't the only way that an electron could change orbits. The electron could go from my third level to my second level, or maybe it started at the second level and goes to the first level. And each of these transitions will have a different energy associated with it, but each of those energies will be very specific to exactly what transition took place. So if I have this heated object, so, so I probably should have said this before, but this is going to be a, a hot, so this is going to be a hot atom, so these electrons start out in a high energy state but want to get back to a, a lower energy state. As these electrons go through these very specific transitions, they will give off a specific set of, uh, of colored photons. And this is what is known as an emission spectrum. And these are referred to as spectral lines, and, and that uh, word comes up a lot. So if I have a hot object and these electrons are, are changing what state they're in, they're going to give off a very specific color of light. Now, the reverse process can also occur. Let's say I have my electron, or sorry, I have my atom, so it's uh, positively charged, and I'm just gonna do show two energy states for, for this particular example. And let's say that this object starts out as cold. So this atom is cold, and there's some hot object, there's some hot light source behind it, so this is hot. So what's going to happen is this light source is going to give off uh, probably black body radiation, so it's going to give off a range of frequencies. So, so there's going to be uh, yellow light being given off by this, and there's going to be red light given off by this, and there's going to be some, some blue light given off by this object that's behind the atom that I'm looking at. Well, in this case, maybe I start off with an electron in my lower energy state, and maybe the, a specific frequency of light hits it, which is at the right energy to bump it up to a higher energy level. So let's say let's say this uh, this red light hits the hits the electron and is at the exact right amount of energy or at the right wavelength to boost this electron up into a up into a higher state, the exact uh, opposite of this process. Well, this object is always wants to be in a lower energy state. This electron wants to get back down. So it might re-emit that uh, light, but it's probably going to emit it in a different direction. Uh, all of this light is going in the same direction, but when the electron falls back down to its original state, then it will re-emit that light, but in a different direction. So the light that reaches us, we still get the yellow light, we still get the blue light, but this red light is going to be missing and we will have uh, a black bar at the same, 
at the same color, at the same frequency and wavelength that we had in our emission spectrum before. So this is known as an absorption line. So we see these two processes where we can get these new features, this emission spectrum and this absorption spectrum. And these spectra are exactly the opposite of each other. If this is the frequency of light that would, uh, that would be given off going from a high energy state to a low energy state, well then it's exactly what a low energy state electron needs to get bumped up to that higher energy state. So these exactly match up. And one of the things that is extremely helpful and helps us learn a lot is that each and every type of atom and molecule will have its own unique emission spectrum and therefore absorption spectrum if, if uh, there's a hot object behind it. So I have a couple of examples of these emission spectra. So this is, uh, this is hydrogen, we have helium, we have sodium, and we have magnesium. And if I, uh, if I heat up these objects and look at the light that's given off by them, we notice that hydrogen gives off, uh, gives off strong spectral lines here, here, and here. And there are a couple of other spectral lines that are outside the kind of range of this picture. You can have them in the infrared or the ultraviolet and, and other things like that. But if you do the same thing with helium, if you heat up helium, and look at the light that's given off, it'll give a different set of spectral lines. And sodium, again, there's going to be a unique set. And each of these will act like a fingerprint and be able to give and have unique characteristics that help us identify exactly what kind of material uh, is giving off this light. Magnesium, again, has a different set of spectra. And we're going to use this and compare this to the spectrum of the sun that we see to try and learn a little bit more about the composition of the sun. And we'll, we'll look at that in the next video.